All right, YouTubers. It's one old army guy here, and uh, just wanted to give my thoughts on uh, bugging in or bugging out. I've heard a couple different people talk about it, and uh, realistically, for me, uh, bugging out really is not an option. The main reason is um, I don't have a second location that I feel comfortable that I could get to on a single tank of gas, and. Uh, that's really the primary reason, you know. I, I don't have a location. I'm working on it, uh, but I don't have one. I'd like to have a location within, you know, 100, 150 miles uh, of my, you know, residence. But uh, you know, some things just, you know, you, you can't always get what you want. You know, so I know that might be a hard concept for some people to understand that you can't always get what you want, but you can't. So that's just the fact of life. The reality of it is, uh, the bug out location I'd like to get to is in Ohio. I'm in Minnesota. It's my in laws place, and it's 753 miles door to door, going main freeways uh, through Chicago. <laughs> if anybody knows anything about Chicago, that is not an option. On its best days, Chicago is gridlock. On its worst days, Chicago is gridlock. Uh, you know, coming back from our last trip, March or spring break, you know, we somehow ended up making the taking a wrong exit and ended up going through the Chicago Skyway. Mistake. It sucked. It was gridlock. And you know, it's nothing more frustrating when you're trying to get from A to B when you have to sit there and wait and wait and wait and burn gas at four dollars and fourteen cents a gallon. That's what it was in, in Illinois when I stopped. So, you know, and driving a big truck, that hurts. So, anyways, the real point of this is just that, you know, bugging out for me is not an option. But I do have uh, a couple of things that I wanted to share. And it's still a work in progress. I'm still working on this. Uh, one is my water. Right here I have, um, well, I have 15 gallons in military water cans. And I'm slowly expanding those. Unfortunately, they've almost doubled in price from when I first got picked those up. Um, I was buying them from a supplier. I was buying them brand new. And yes, I know you can get water cans at Gander Mountain or you know Cabela's or Walmart or all those other ones. You get the blue cubes. The difference is, I can stack these. I can take those out and I can stack them on top of one another. I can throw it. I can pitch it. It's not gonna. It's made to take the abuse of a grunt. And if a grunt can abuse it, I can abuse it. Cause guess what? I'm an old grunt. So I've got three of them. I'm hoping to get ten of them. Uh, I got a buddy of mine here. He's gonna buy some as well. So we're gonna put in a pretty big order here shortly. But right there. I've got 15, let's see, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, about 21 gallons of water uh, just on that bottom shelf. Not a lot, but better than zip, okay? But the other thing I want to show is here. So, my go bins. These bins have enough food. And it's mixed. I've got pasta, rice, beans, sugar, there's flour, there's wheat, um, salt, all kinds of stuff in here. And I'm going to redo these a little bit because I've got a different idea on them. And what I'm going to actually add is make these not just dry goods, but I'm going to take some of my, excuse me here, we're just kind of a mess because I'm doing a lot of things. Excuse me. Some of my the chicken breast, the tuna, the spam, you know, some of the Chef Boyardee, uh, maybe not the Classico because it's in a glass jar. I prefer things to be in, in the cans, in these bins, uh, but some of the soups and the veggies, etc., and make mixed bins. Same idea of what I've got here, but a mixed bin with meat, vegetables, canned goods, some dry goods, etc., etc. Um, it's giving me more of uh, 
uh, you know, more <laughs> more of a menu to choose from versus, you know, here we go, kids, we're going to have rice and beans for breakfast, rice and beans for lunch, and beans and pasta for dinner. Yummy. Uh, I'll tell you, from being in the Army, having the same menu gets old. Okay? Gets old real quick. Um, so this is just one my thought. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and do these these bins. But these will be my go bins. If the shit gets so bad that I have to leave my castle, my house, my place of residence, and head for the hills, one I'm gonna tell you, you know it's freaking bad, because I don't plan on leaving. <laughs> this is my castle, and I plan on defending it as long as long as I possibly can and keeping my family safe. Uh, but. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking these bins so that I'm going to make these bins so that if I have to go, I can grab the bins, take them out, put them in the truck, and get the hell out of Dodge. And hopefully by that time, if this ever happens, um, that I've got a plan, I've got a place to go to. Because right now I have three routes that I've come up with to go from here to Ohio, uh, bypassing Chicago. And guess what? I need a lot of gas. And a lot of gas. So it's not really a good option for me, and that's the primary reason because I can't really store that much gas, or and or cannot transport that much gas when you get down to it. Um, so that's the option. I've got the go bins. I'm gonna have some water. I've got sleeping bags and camping equipment here. I've got first aid equipment here and lanterns. Of course, I've got another lantern there. These are all LED and battery powered. Now the thing on that is people are going to say, well, you got to carry batteries. True, I do have to carry batteries. But I went out, pardon the mess, and uh, probably not the best, but they're energizers. I don't know if you can get this to focus, if I can get this to focus here a little bit. Uh, it's an energizer kit. And this box here does AA, AAA, C's, D's, and 9 volts, all in one. Now the reason why I went with this is because upstairs we have a Nintendo Wii system for the kids and it eats AA batteries the remotes chew, them through, chew through them so I bought a kit for the kids to recharge the batteries so we could use it well it just made sense to me because I have the lanterns those lanterns run on double A's these run on D's okay I've got two of those big ones and they're pretty bright they're a good little lantern I picked those up uh, Last year, uh, Sports Authority, I believe, at the end of the end of the season, they're having a sale. Best time, best time of year to buy stuff, guys, is in the fall when they have all that summer camping gear and they want to make way for all their winter stuff. Is in the fall. Uh, I bought a tent, 50% off, big tent, 10 by 10, nice big family tent. Uh, I paid 80 bucks for it, half off. Can't beat that. But okay, bug in, bug out, bugging in. I got all my food, I got my water, I got my water bobs, I've got my rain barrels, I've got my water purification here so I can go to the back pond if I need to uh, and pick it up or to purify the rain water coming through the barrels because I'm still a little sketchy on that. You know, obviously the plus side is I have all my food here. So that's the big thing for me bugging in. I don't have to do anything, just defend it. I've got all my ammo, I've got it in cans. Sorted, you know, 5.56 five, shotgun and, uh, excuse me, pistol ammo. Now, mind you, I know there's guys out there have a lot more than I do. I understand that. I have what I can afford to do right now. You know, I'm not working. I'm a stay-at-home dad. As I, as I joke around, my wife retired me. She retired me from the Army. Um, and the way things are going, probably a good thing. But anyways, um, I'm happy. She's happy. My kids are happy. We're all happy, and I, as far as I'm concerned, that's all I care about. We are happy, and I'm doing what I have to do. Um, my wife's on board. Kids are on board. It's a family event. I'm not a closet prepper. I'm not one of these guys going, oh, buy yeah, you know, okay, do this. You know, no. My wife knows about it. My in-laws know about it. My mom knows about it. My mom's, well, she's kind of a prepper too, but um, unfortunately, there again, you know, our family is in Ohio. Ultimately, yes, I'd love to be able to get to Ohio uh, in that scenario, but I don't think it's a real, you know, too realistic of an option, anyways. Especially with the gay, <coughs> excuse me, especially with the way gas prices are going. So, 
know, we got it. Master plan will be, I'll have 10 of those water barrels down there, or water containers, giving me 50 gallons of water for the go. Next shelf up will be redone, and we'll have the go bins, I'll have four go bins up on top there, not to mention I have other, bar other bins around the house. Um, right here is in this tote, this big 48 gallon Rubbermaid tote is uh, more camp equipment, tents, cots, um, excuse me, um, cooking utensils, mess kits, etc, etc. Okay, and of course you can see over there is my uh, my coffee pot. Because one thing, I have to have coffee. And I've got it right there. So, um, and then here's my, my, my old rucksack. Now, you know, I know the guys are out there. They've got the, they've got the bags. They've got your, your get out of, you know, the bug out bag. Well, that's great. If I was a single man, that'd be great. I would put what I could carry in my bag and have my bag ready to go. But there again, you're limited. How much ammo can you carry? How many weapons can you carry? How much food can you carry? And how much water can you carry? And I can tell you from experience, I can load that rucksack up in excess of 120 pounds and put it on my back and I can walk with it. I can go a long ways with that. But my wife and my kids aren't going to be able to do that. Now that's an extreme situation. Extreme. So it's just something people think about. You know, it's great. You know, you've got your bug out bag. Are you putting your bug out bag on your back and are you walking 10, 15, 20 miles? Can you do that? Have you ever done it? big question you know I'm 43 years old and I've done a lot of stuff and I've carried a heavy rucksack and I've, I've marched and and done all kinds of walk many many miles I've ran many many miles and I may not be in the best of shape but I'm still in good shape I'm in better shape than a lot of people out there uh, even even with the consideration of two years ago where I almost died, but that's you know that's a whole other story. You know, uh, life throws you curveballs. The biggest question is, are we really prepared for what's coming, and are we going to be able to execute our plans as necessary? Have you practiced it? Do you know? You know, uh, you know, carrying a heavy rucksack, it's it's hard. You know, I went hunting. Uh, this last fall, and this is my this is like I this is really this is my all around bag. I use that for everything. I've got one of them. Uh, I'm gonna pick up a couple more, just so that I can have one set up just for hunting and one for whatever else I needed to for Boy Scouts, etc. Uh, but I hunted. I carried my little stool and some other stuff, and you know I was gonna be out there for the duration. Yeah, it's a big bag to carry out hunting, but. Um, you know, it worked. I mean, I had extra clothes in there if it got cold, which I ended up needing, etc. Uh, you know, so you got to think, how much stuff are you going to be able to carry? Are you going to be able to carry your food, your water? You know, water's heavy. Those cans are heavy. You're not going to go very far carrying, trying to carry one of those cans. You know, you might, you know, you might be able to carry a two-quart canteen like this. You know, and maybe, uh, a little water purification treatment, or you might be able to carry. Uh, oh, I can get it out here. You know, one of those Camelbacks. You know, great options. But there again, how much water? That's not a lot of water. That's good for a day. So just an option. Bugging in, bugging out. You get a bug out on foot. Bug out in your car. You know, the perils of bugging out in your car is traffic. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Morning traffic around here I know is pretty bad, especially St. Paul, Minneapolis. You know, my wife drives through it every day. Uh, a couple times I've driven through it, I'm like, holy crap. You know, and I keep thinking, what would it be like if everybody in the city was all of a sudden, or around the city, was trying to get out at the same... Alright, so I had a battery. My battery's died on the camera, so I had to go and change them out. Um... So yeah, ultimate gridlock. Then what? You know, 
you run out of gas, your car's stuck, you got all your gear in the back of your vehicle, what are you going to do? Then go to foot on foot? You know, like I said, I don't, I don't think, uh, you know, for me, not much of an option. You know, am I prepared for some of the stuff? Yeah, I've got, you know, like I said, sleeping bags, water bobs, equipment, food, excuse me, and water, etc. Like everybody else is a prepper. You know, uh, I've got battery, battery chargers, I've got ammo. You know, uh, thanks to uh, Low Buck and uh, Prepper 5, we've got a reloader here. I need to redo my bench because it doesn't support it. You know, Minbound came over last week, and we we're sitting there looking at this, and we we're talking about you know the reloading bench and um, getting things going. But you know, making your group, yeah, and you know, there it's one of the things. You know, Minbound and I are 15 miles apart. Might as well be 50 miles and the shit hit the fan, because you know, respectively, is you know, I, would I be able to get down to his place to help him? You know, probably not. Freeway is going to be a complete cluster. You know, would he be able to get his stuff and get his girls into the car and get up here? You know, who knows? We don't. You know, uh, I just think that the gridlock, the freeway systems, especially here in Minneapolis, St. Paul, there's not too many ways in, and not too many ways out. At least that I'm aware of, anyways. Being new here, I know people like uh, Yankee Prepper and Men Bound have been here a few years, and uh, Ed Wire, Ed down there. Um, and there's a few others. There's a lot of people around here in uh, Minnesota that uh, I've met. Well, not really met, but I've talked to. Um, and there might be alternate routes that I'm just not aware of. But I still think that it's going to be complete gridlock and we're not going to be able to move. So bugging in is my is my choice and what I'm planning to do right now. Um, you know, going back to the batteries, if I do have to bug out and I'm needing the batteries, I have a 1500 watt inverter in my truck that I can plug this into and run that off with and charge them up. So there's the options there. Um, you know, I'm still working on alternate energy, solar. That's one of my plans here this summer is to get some solar going. Um, get a generator. I mean, there's one thing I don't have is a generator. You know, so I don't have the means for power. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. You know. Uh, the bad side of that is my freezer, which is full of meat, would perish. You know, so that's the reason, one reason why I'm looking at a generator. Not because I want to power lights. You know, quite honestly, I wouldn't want to have lights on and a shit hit the fan scenario. I don't want everybody knowing that uh, you know we got power. I'd rather just be able to have a quiet generator running my my freezer and keep my food cold. Um, and you know, kind of go incognito, low key, under the radar. You know, make people think you're suffering just like they are. That's my plan. You know, um, I'm not going to stand out there with my my AR strapped across my chest and my you know my battle rattle on, and standing there at Kevlar and looking like a federal soldier. Hell no, it's a good way to get shot too. You know, people think you're a federal soldier and they're uh, you know martial laws enacted. <laughs> and think I want to be walking around looking like a uh, looking like that? No, thank you. Not my, not my cup of tea. So, just some more thoughts. Anyways, like I said, these are my thoughts. I'm bugging in, bugging out, and some of the things about prepping. And uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. You know, I know people are gonna, you know, say, "Oh, you should do this. You should do that, Army. You should do this." You know what? These are my thoughts. This is what I'm working on. And I, I take everybody's words. I consider it. If it's something that will work for me, I'm like, "Hey, you know, it's a great idea." Or, "No, not gonna work for me, but thanks." Um, Everybody's different. Everybody's in a different situation. You know, and everybody's learning from everybody else. I didn't learn all this on my own. I've learned from watching tons of videos. You know, and a lot of this is common sense. But uh, there's some things we just don't know. And there's some, you know, you just have to admit that. We need to share the information as much as possible. And, you know, I'm working on that. You know, I'm fortunate that, you know, I've got years of military training, so when it comes to a lot of the tactical stuff, uh, I'm good in survival and first aid. I've got a lot of skills. You know, basic hunting and fishing. I've got a lot of skills. Um, you know, there's people in my neighborhood. I can guarantee you that don't, and they lack on that. But I'm also working on a network. You know, getting some of my neighbors involved. 
ones that I've talked to and I trust that I trust. You know, and that's the big the, the big thing. You just don't walk and go up go up and down your street soliciting and people say, Hey, you know, I'm a prepper, uh what's your plan? You know, and they're kinda of like, What the hell? You know, I got a couple people that I talk to that, you know, we sit around and drink beer and uh I've shared it with and they're on board and now they're they weren't preppers. But guess what? They are now. They're putting stuff back and they're just starting out. You know, so together. You know, you build that group slowly, bit by bit. And our last location, when I was in Ohio, uh, same thing. Had a couple people that were, you know weren't preppers, but are preppers now. So uh, just keep it growing. So, uh, like I said, just my thoughts. Thought I'd share them. Um, you know, there's some. There's my Joe and Zach. Well, I guess it would be really more. Joe's, <laughs> not Zach's, but the the hobo wine. My, I'm working on it. Um, and you gotta have fun. Take it and have fun. Run with it. Uh, yeah, life is serious, and this whole you know shit hit the fan. SHTF, that rule of law. It can get depressing. It can get mundane. I mean, it really bring you down. But like I said, you know, you gotta have fun and enjoy life. I do this. This is part of my lifestyle. And keeping the stuff and keeping my my insurance policy for my kids is knowing that, you know, I've got some some food. You know, some of it might not be the best. I mean, I got Pringles down there. The reason? My son likes Pringles. It's a comfort food. He's gonna want it. I've got popcorn. He's gonna. They're gonna. We're gonna want popcorn. You know, uh, it's not a lot, but it's better than nothing. You know, I mean. It's a good start. Comfort foods. There you go, little buck. There you go. This is for you. Yep. Medicinal purposes. And there again, I got more water down there. I got another three gallons. You know. So. And I'm not trying to show show off what I've got. Because, you know, I really don't, what I feel, I don't have a lot of stuff. I got an, uh, enough to keep me going for a little bit my family. Uh, probably about three months. But, uh, anyways, I'm starting to ramble. So, I'm going to end this video. And uh, hope that, you know, this kind of helps and, and can enlighten some people here to just the whole bug in, bug out options. And uh, consider it, you know, what really what really is involved in bugging out. You know, if you've got an alternate location, that's awesome. You know, uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little envious of those that do. You know, I'd love to have a retreat. I'd love to have a spot where, you know, five, six families of us can get together and, you know, have a storage facility there, Connex box or whatever, and have our food in that and keep it stored. That'd be awesome. Um, we just don't have that right now because it takes this wonderful thing called money. And, well... Like I said, I'm not working. I'm a stay-at-home dad, you know, uh, working on a couple things myself. But, you know, money money is the key. So, and I know I'm not alone on that. And, you know, there's people out there that are on, uh, I don't know how you want to, a tighter budget than I'm on. You know, Minbound. I mean, he's a, good, a great example of a guy that can uh, take stuff, and take a budget and show you how you can prep on any budget. You know, and he's got a phenomenal um, setup going. You know, and we talk every couple of days. We talk, and actually, I think I'll be going down uh, next week to help him out with some stuff too. He's working on the garage, but you know, and that's what it's about: helping each other out and sharing. You know, uh, when I started this. I really, you know, my intention was, you know, I'm going to keep to myself. I'll, I'll stay quiet. I'll be the, you know, I'm not going to say closet prepper because my family knew about it. But I wasn't going to share anybody, share this information with anybody. Well, you know, you can read a couple books. And I, I do a fair bit of reading. Turn off the light. All right. You know, I've done some reading. And one of the books that really got me was Patriots. 
you know, made me really open my eyes to the fact that you got to have uh, uh, a group. So, you know, just like I said, things to consider. My thoughts, right, wrong, or indifferent, they're my thoughts uh, on how I feel about these things. So, you know, and as you can see from, I don't know if you can read these or not, but going through there, there's all kinds of different books. And they're not all um, SHTF books. You know, I got you know, different things. But a lot of them are. And, you know, down here I've got more military history and gunsmithing and, you know, etc. But, anyways, like I said, just thought I'd share. Hope everybody's having a good spring. I know here in Minnesota it's been uh, quite warm. It's cooling down again right now. Um, but uh, it's been a terrific spring and getting early started on things. Not like last year where we're digging ourselves out out of you know three feet of snow all the time. So, anyways, videos running along. Thought I'd share. Hope everybody's having a great time. All right, YouTubers. One old army guy out. Alright, so here we are, stuck in Chicago traffic on a Saturday afternoon, which is basically St. Patrick's Day, and for all those that think you're going to bug out in a SHCF scenario, guess what? This is a tenth of what you're going to deal with for traffic. This is it. This is only part of Chicago, and I'm doing 25 miles an hour, and I'm not even into the city yet. So. Uh, bugging out for me really isn't being an option because parking lot. Welcome to Chicago.